many, many years ago. Um, at Benz at Great Court, back when we all held, um, uh, there were few enough kingdoms that we held it in what is now the Cooper store, that bar. <laughs> <laughs> used, to be, uh, used to be the place we all played in the evenings. Um, we would dance on that horrible concrete floor. <laughs> we would all come together and flirt with each other, and it was really lovely. And um, of course, all the banners were hung, as they are in the, the new Great Hall. Um, and uh, I had been asked uh, to join the board. And um, for many years, I had said, you know, I, I respect the Laurelette so much that I, I don't feel that I have done the research to be able to guide someone who came to me saying, what, what did people in our medieval, the real medieval times, what would they have been saying? And so I, I said, I, I'm not comfortable. I very much appreciate the, the, the honor, but I, I can't accept. And so um, uh, Princess Moria, at the time, um, came running up on behalf of the Queen of Midrow at the time. And uh, she said, Mary, 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 <clears throat> they want to put you on vigil for the laurel. And I went, I, I said something on her. And she says, no, for Arthurian research. <laughs> 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 so technically, I am a researcher. <laughs> And I thought, well, if anyone came to me asking about 1,500 years of the King Arthur legends being told and retold and retold all around the world, then yes, I could, I could guide them in the right direction. So um, I'm going to do a few of the King Arthur things. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not burning. So, I will do that one after this one. I have one that. This one is a very interesting, not quite the complete it. But as you all know, um, hopeless, if you have not read or been told the King Arthur legends, he was the, the finest warrior in, uh, in very old England. <laughs> we all picture the, uh, you know, the, the Norman castles with the little pennants on things. But uh, the original fellow was probably leader of a few dozen uh, what, fighters in a time when um, all of Britain was being assailed from all the covers. People came across the sea trying to steal land from the farmers. People came and raided, blah, blah, blah. So this chieftain managed to hold the raiders at bay for, I don't know, a lifetime, however much that was back in the 500s. And, uh, and as such, we started to embroider the legend. <clears throat> the legend became a tale of romance, Suddenly, we had courtly love appear with the Normans. We had romance arrive in the 1100s because suddenly all the boys were off at war and the women held the purse strings, and all of the minstrels went, oh, My lady, what would you like to hear? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, Tell me of the ladies of court. Forget about the rest of that stuff. And so Lancelot appears in the legend at that point, in the, the days of Eleanor of Aquitaine. And so um, Lancelot becomes the, the quintessential torture bluff. He loves, and that's, this was very big in Norman society, and they brought it across. Um, the whole point was to be horribly loved. You just could not live without this one object of your desire. And it was very important that that object of your desire be completely unattainable, preferably married, and you are never, ever going to achieve the, the devotion, the consummation of your, your love for this person. <clears throat> well, Lancelot appears as the perfect lover for the Queen Guinevere herself. Now, I, I love Guinevere because whenever Arthur was off doing things, she was running Camelot and doing it back with my heels. So, <laughs> I like her. I like her a lot. <laughs> the, um, the whole point of courtly love, though, is that nothing ever goes right and it, it ends up tragically. And so, Lancelot and Guinevere dance around each other, longing for most of their lives. And eventually, it is said that they succumbed to their passions and um, got caught. And of course, Arthur 
being a king of law, he's put in the terrible position of putting his best, his best friend and his wife on trial in front of everyone for what could have been a sort of private mistake. So the trial itself, um, I've used to give you a, an insight into the variety of personalities in the, the next one at the table. As we all know, there is there is never a model that is not lost. <laughs> King Arthur's knights, they filled the table round, save for one who stood before them. For once without a weapon, for once he stood in shame. <coughs> the trial's charge was treason and betrayal of an oath. His guilt be proven, death would fall on traitors both. The knights would counsel Arthur's hard decision. And Lancelot, his, his head held high, said, I'm tried for love of the wedding. My crime was love. The first to speak with was Cain with sharpest tongue. He is a man like any other. The word of kings command him, but his heart does not obey. For all his strength and boldness, this knight's spirit is too weak. His crime has no excuses and no favors may he seek. The laws of kings don't bend and can't be broken. And unless a lot of his head held high said, I'll stand for love of Guinevere. This knight right well, as for bold Gawain, he has ever stood beside me. With steel he's answered insults and defended chivalry. Oh, this man contended for the honor of your wife. His actions were not proper, but should not cost him his life. His service past should earn a few some mercy. Lancelot, his head held high, said, I fought for love of Guinevere. I'll fight for love. Sir Tristan spoke, I love my uncle's wife. For her I gladly suffer, she is my heart's delight. Is old the one who tempts me, and she for whom I'm pure. My love for her confounds me, and is all of which I'm sure. I understand my brother's contradictions. And let's what his head held high, said, I cry my love for Guinevere. I cried for love. Spoke Galahad, the purest of them all. Have no fear of predilection, <clears throat> for though he is my father, he is my source of shame. He joined in sinful union with my unrebelling mother. For all his flame and virtue, he has gone and fed another. The laws of God declare his act down me. And Lancelot. His head held high, said, I lie in love with one of you dear. I lied for love. So as Arthur wept, he called the wrath of heaven on the lovers who'd betrayed him. On the night he had called brother, not worthy of his trust. On the queen of his deception, yet could say she loves him still. Or lost in sense and beauty, and in justice for their guilt. Arthur knew the only price for treason. And Lancelot, his head held high, said, I die for love of Guinevere. 